Hey guys, welcome to our first ever Frequently Asked Questions Friday. I don't even know what to call it, but I'm doing this basically because, you know, in the very not too distant past, I was able to, and I made, I made a point to answer every question that came into the comments of my videos. Um, even if that means I had to answer them over 200 times, like the question, how often do I add or do I spray the tomatoes with the aspirin mixture? And the answer to that for the 201st time is every two weeks. Um, so what I decided to do, because literally over the past two months, this channel has doubled in size and I'm so grateful. Um, but what that means and the downside of that is that I'm not able to get to every single question and comment. Um, I do read every single question and comment. So I want you to keep sending those in because I love reading the questions and comments and I will try to give each one a heart to show you that I did read it, but I just don't have time to get back to everybody with, with full answers. So every two weeks on Friday, I'm gonna be doing this, um, answering the, the, most, the most asked questions from the videos of the previous two weeks. And uh, I really hope you like this format. All right, so let's just get right into the questions. The first one is from Val. Hi, Brian, how deep are your raised beds for your tomatoes? If I'm starting out with a new raised bed, what soil mixture should I use? Um, well, all of my raised beds are 15 inches tall with about 12 inches of soil. And if you are gonna have your raised beds on concrete like I do, you wanna strive for about 12 inches if they're gonna be built over soil or lawn six inches will do um, as far as the soil you don't want to use garden soil it's too heavy and too it compacts too much you want to use either a raised bed mix i use kellogg's organic raised bed mix it's seemingly available almost nationwide at home depot um, or some type of potting mix anything other than that is going to be too heavy um, you can also get it delivered in bulk, you know, look around, um, but it should have, it shouldn't be soil based. It should be like almost like a compost, maybe some uh, perlite thrown in, you'll see the little white chunks and that's gonna keep it nice and airy. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, Melissa says, sweet prize pack indeed, feel the love from Neptune's harvest, absolutely. I'd love to learn more about how to prune my Roma tomatoes since they are determinate. So in the last video, we went over determinate versus indeterminate. Determinate grow to a certain size, about four feet. That's as big as they get. And then they produce all their fruit almost at once. Uh, so we don't really prune determinate varieties like Roma for production. In fact, the more you prune on a determinate tomato, the less crop you will get because you're cutting off all of the side branches that do produce lots of tomatoes. So the only time you'd want to prune a Roma tomato is if there's any disease, um, take off any yellowing leaves, any dead leaves, any diseased leaves. Uh, you do want to space the plants out further, as I mentioned at the, in the video, for airflow. Since we're not pruning for airflow, we need to space the plants out for airflow. But you don't want to really prune them much because you do take off tomatoes. Uh, Yvetsi just entered the giveaway. Uh, even though I just planted my tomato plants, I now have to research determinate and indeterminate to see what I have. I use new bags of organic gardening soil. Did I still need to use the fertilizers before planting them in the grow bags? So now I'm not sure if you're asking me that if you've already planted them and are not sure what you should do, or if the organic gardening soil takes the place of fertilizer. So since the first part of that's gonna be answered in another, another person's question, I'm gonna take the second part. Um, if you use organic gardening soil, do you need to fertilize? Now that question could probably be answered in a three week lecture series. So I'm gonna to try to keep it simple. Um, a bag of organic garden soil, potting mix, whatever, that's really telling you more about what's not in it versus what's in it. So organic would mean, you know, it, it hasn't been used around or had things used on it that were synthetic, poisons, herbicides, fungicides, um, insecticides, none of that's been used on an organic product. 
That doesn't tell you what's in it. Even organic homemade compost, which is one of the best things you can put into your garden, um, it feeds the soil and not necessarily the plants. Um, when you add compost to your soil, it creates a very uh, fertile environment for all of the beneficial bacteria and microbes. And what those do with the compost, you're helping them to multiply. And when you have large amounts of that, what those do is they actually take the fertilizer in the soil and get it into the plants. There's a relationship with the roots and the bacteria and all of that that really help the uptake of the fertilizer into the plant. So theoretically, while it doesn't fertilize your plant, it you may not need as much fertilizer because the uptake is being helped by all that beneficial um, bacteria and all of those things. So to specifically answer your question, just because it says it's or organic doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna take the place of fertilizer. In fact, it doesn't take the place of fertilizer. You know, compost does have nutrients in it, in nitrogen, all those things not necessarily to, to, to sustain and help a plant to thrive, but it is definitely the backbone of your soil. All right, so the next question is from Greg. I bought a tomato fertilizer that you recommended called Mater Magic. The instructions are a little confusing. I have 16 tomato plants and it doesn't look like this will last the whole growing season. Can you help with how you fer use this fertilizer or is it better to use the Neptune liquid? Okay, well, Mater Magic, uh, up until last year, I did recommend this, and it's a great product. However, it is on the expensive side. It may not seem like it at first when you're comparing prices between this and Neptune's Harvest, but, and I was never sponsored by them, I just used it because it worked, and I recommended it because of that. So yeah, this is not gonna feed even 16 plants for the whole season. You will definitely have to have multiples of it. So just price-wise, I did a comparison here. So this is a half a pound and it's about $15 on Amazon. So a pound of this would be about $30, right? The Neptune's Harvest, the, the dry fertilizers that I was using on the last video, which was the kelp and the crab and lobster. These are four pound bags each. So. Using both, that's eight pounds. And that actually equates to about $7.50 a pound versus $30 a pound. And I'm talking both those products together. Uh, now, if you're talking about the tomato and veg formula, which I'm gonna talk about on the next Tomato Tuesday, this actually, uh, it's $57 for the bottle, but it creates or makes 128 gallons of fertilizer, which comes out to 44 cents per gallon. So price wise, the Neptune's Harvest is a much better deal. Um, when I get into, well, nutrient wise, this is a great product, but it can't even touch these products here. I've already explained the other two. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch um, this last Tuesday's video about those. And then definitely stay tuned for next Tuesday because this product, when I did my research on it, it blew my mind. And I'm going to let you know all about that on Tomato Tuesday. But if you've already got this and you can't return it, it's definitely great stuff. Use it until it's gone and then maybe uh, convert over to the Neptune's Harvest, which I think you will find a lot more cost effective and the nutrient level and all of the, just all the benefits are, are so much greater. All right. Kathy King, she gets a twofer because they're both great questions. Um, can tomatoes survive in temps over 100 degrees? So I'll, add, I'll answer that first. They can survive, but they will not produce generally. Um, once the weather gets into the 90s, especially into the hundreds, your tomato plants are gonna stop producing. In fact, when they're setting flowers, those flowers will probably just fall off. Um, but if you take care of it and you know keep it watered and keep the disease away, then you know once that weather cools down it'll start producing again on really hot days you can go out there with some 30 percent to 50 percent shade cloth and the hottest part of the day just toss that over the plants and that's going to help a lot probably not in the hundreds though it will help but it's still not going to bring back the flowers 
So just have some patience there. Okay, so the second part of that question was, how can I add all those nutrients you showed to my tomatoes that are already planted? So we did discuss the importance of the phosphorus especially being down at the root level because it doesn't move real well through the soil. Um, and that's true. So there's two things you can do. With the powdered product, the granular product, um, scratch away the surface and at least get, them, get, get it down to uh, you know, maybe an inch underneath the soil, closer to the roots. Um, so scratch that soil back, put the fertilizer on and then cover it back over. Um, or Neptune's Harvest has a liquid crab and lobster shell, which is definitely gonna help get the nutrients down to the roots. Um, if, you, if you already have maybe bone meal or something like that, you can try dissolving that in water. I don't think it dissolves very easily. Uh, so those two would be your best bet for after you've already planted the tomatoes and then you're finding out this information. Okay, the next question is from Brienne. And Brienne wants to know uh, how I keep the critters at bay with the stinky fertilizer. She ordered some and wooey it's stinky dogs alone were obsessed with the packaging so i'm guessing you're talking about the um neptune's harvest so i think the stinkiness of it depends on what you've used in the past it's definitely all relative uh, synthetic fertilizers of course have really no smell if anything they smell a little chemically uh, organic fertilizers on the other hand are pretty much all derived from animal material most not all um, so you've got blood meal, bone meal, uh, manure, feathers, ground up fish. So they're all going to carry with them an intrinsic smell. They're going to have a smell to them. Now, I used to use a brand before I found Neptune's Harvest, and I won't mention the brand, but it was a gloppy, stinky, it was a fish emulsion, gloppy, stinky, brown pudding looking material that uh, had a definite odor. I mean, as soon as you open the lid and then when you fertilize with it, the smell would last for up to 24 hours and more. In fact, I still remember getting in trouble one time because the morning we were having a party, I fertilized the entire yard with that stuff and did not make for a pleasant party. Um, Neptune's Harvest, on the other hand, it's not gloppy. If you've opened it, it actually, um, looks kind of like a tea and it does have a scent like all organic fertilizer but i don't think it's super unpleasant or super strong i think and I, after using it it only lasts maybe 30 minutes to an hour that smell in the yard and then it, it, it dissipates now as far as attracting animals to the garden i've not had that problem um, except for rats, but they're not after the soil or what's in the soil, they're after the fruit. As a side note, the, if you have a deer problem, and a lot of people I know have written in about a deer problem, the fish product, if you use it as a foliar feed and spray it on the leaves, that will keep the deer away because they are strict vegetarians, they have very sensitive noses, and they're going to smell that plant and it's going to smell like fish and they're going to take off. So that could be a good, a good solution for that. But as far as attracting animals, I've never had that problem. All right, so Naeem says, or asks, how, to, how do I tell if a tomato plant I already have is determinate or indeterminate? As far as I know, and you can let me know in the comments if you know of a, another way, but I don't think there is a way when they're small to, to know the difference. Uh, the only way to know and by the time they get big enough to show what they are, you know, you're probably going to be, it's probably too late to train them or whatever you're planning on doing, depending on the variety. Um, I would say if the tag doesn't say, it's most of the time going to be indeterminate. But if it says, if you have at least the name of the variety of tomato, Google it. And through Google, you most likely will be able to find out if that is a determinate or indeterminate variety. All right, Ellen asks, uh, good afternoon from Augusta, Georgia. I'm new to using peat moss. Do I wet this stuff before planting? You do, you definitely do. Uh, peat moss is sometimes very difficult to get wet and to, to saturate. And so you wanna soak it in water, especially before seeds, because a lot of times, before I knew this, I'd 
put the seeds in and then I'd try to water it and in trying to get it wet the seeds would get all washed out so yes short answer while we're on this subject I want to take this opportunity to talk about something that some of you have asked about um, when I say that I'm using peat moss I preface it by saying sustainable peat moss now or, or cocoa core and that's because Europe for example um, has is having a real shortage and actually a, a, a environmental crisis with the peat bogs there because peat bogs in Europe have been used for thousands of years peat for heating as a fuel source and then you know for at least a hundred years for uh, horticulture gardening purposes and so they have overmined their peat bogs to the point of almost environmental disaster and I do I think correct me if I'm wrong I, I'm almost thinking there's a ban on it for horticultural purposes or or there is going to be they're talking about it now if you're in North America you may have no idea what I'm talking about and that's because in North America we get most of our peat probably all of our peat moss from Canada Canada has over 270 million acres of peat bogs and out of that only about 40,000 acres are mined or harvested and so that means basically one out of every 6,000 acres are harvested for horticultural purposes so even though that peat bogs take thousands of years to develop peat moss Canadian peat bogs are so vast that they produce over 70 percent more peat moss every year than is harvested so in that sense that would make, mean that is sustainable now a lot of times people talk about using cocoa core instead um, but there's a huge argument against that because that isn't sustainable you know the way that these trees are harvested and then flying them around the world to places like Europe to use is not so great for the environment either so do your research on that and and do what you feel feel is right okay last question it's from Benjamin Ficus is that your real name there's a ficus benjamina that's why I ask it's a tropical tree um, how do you kill fungus gnat larvae once they're in the soil I saw this video too late okay so there's a few ways to do it I'll start with one that is probably something you already have in your medicine cabinet and that's hydrogen peroxide and it's like the three percent hydrogen peroxide and you can do a soil drench which means take one part peroxide to four parts water and mix it up and just drench the entire root zone and that should take care of it if it doesn't or you don't have peroxide you can use neem oil mix it to the package or the bottle directions and drench the soil with that and then a couple of things that are a little bit harder to get would be um, BT which I use for for caterpillars in my garden but it's a special it's a special variety it's called Bacillus thuringiensis or whatever and it's a variety Israeliensis I'll put that on the screen because I probably completely butchered that um, so that will work as a soil drench and you can also introduce uh, beneficial nematodes into the soil um, there's bad nematodes there's good nematodes the good nematodes will eat the larva of the fungus gnat um, so I will try to link some of those down in the description if I can find some that I can recommend otherwise uh, Google it and and find find those for yourself oh I was gonna update you on my aneurysm as one of the questions because thank you they very thankfully you guys do um, ask about that a lot and how I'm doing and so symptoms wise I'm doing really well uh, all the symptoms have gone except for the heartbeat in my ear when I get a little if I'm out in the garden working too hard or if I eat a big meal then I'll start to hear that that heartbeat in my ear it has lessened though um, I did have my MRI last Wednesday and it came back with mixed I have mixed feelings about it the apparently the the pictures that were taken some of the ones they needed to really see it were not taken what are you gonna do um, 
So my doctor, but in looking at what he saw, he said that it hasn't gotten any better, but it hasn't gotten any worse, but he doesn't fully know until I have another set of uh, scans taken. So it's his feeling that I can wait another three months, have it done again, and then hopefully at that time they'll do it right and we'll know for sure. But I'm feeling good and I, I'm going to take that as a good report. So uh, continue the prayers and the good thoughts. I do appreciate those a lot. And um, with that being said, this tomato or this uh, self-sufficient Sunday. Oh, well, my ankle's pretty good too. I sprained it last week. Couldn't bring you our self-sufficient Sunday video, but I'm feeling much better now. I'm limping a little bit, but it's pretty much back to, to normal for the most part. So we will be doing our chicken coop um, tour this Sunday and I will be showing you how if you have chickens to save yourself some work and you only have to water them and feed them maybe once a month that's a big deal so anyway I will see you guys later enjoy your weekend and I'll see you Sunday